we will now bring before you uh, Ms. LaDon Langster, and she will facilitate this going forward. Can we, y'all, LaDon has worked very hard on this. Can we give God praise? We have a wonderful gift in the, our directional leader of groups. Can we give God praise? She put it all together. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate our gifts. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you are here. I know that God has something very rich to impart in you through these fabulous speakers and through his Holy Spirit, because anything that could go wrong has gone wrong. And I have never seen anything like it. And I was telling my mom, who's visiting me from California, this is spiritual warfare. And so I am excited about what the Lord is doing and what he's going to do. We have three very incredible speakers today that I am so excited to know and so grateful that they said yes to coming. And I am going to introduce each of them. Now, I know everybody can read, but I'm going to read the bio that's on the back. So if you'd like, you can read with me. And the, our first presenter is Ms. Nicole R. Jiggett. She is a registered play therapist, supervisor, and certified trauma specialist. She is the president and owner of Replay Counseling Center. And she is a graduate of Virginia Commonwealth University School of Social Work with a Master's of Social Work she received in 2000. Nicole has been working with children, adolescents, and their families for over 20 years. She is passionate about providing individuals with the opportunity to work through their difficulties and begin to start feeling better about their lives utilizing expressive therapies. Nicole serves as a field instructor and an adjunct professor for the VCU School of Social Work. She is also a trainer for the Chesapeake Bay Professional Seminars, a provider for continuing education for social workers, psychologists, and counselors, and play therapists. Nicole has provided numerous training for mental health agencies to include Virginia Home for Boys and Girls, National Counseling Group, Inc., Hampton Roads Community Services Board, the Richmond Chapter of the Virginia Society for Clinical Social Work, as well as for the NASW Virginia Annual, Virginia Annual Conference. Nicole is not all of these things, but she is saved. She loves Jesus. She is an incredible mother. She is dedicated, and she is the best therapist in Richmond. I have heard this from many different people who didn't know me or St. Paul's and said, you know, no, you want to go to Nicole because she's the best with her four-month-long waiting list. So if there is anyone who is prepared to share about self and soul care, it is Nicole and she is incredible. So can you join me in giving God praise for our first speaker on self and soul care, Ms. Nicole Jiggins. Thank you, LaDon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And so she's shared a lot, but I'll share a little bit more about myself. Um, yes, my clients are as young as age three, all the way to age 63. And because three-year-olds have problems too, but then again, sometimes if they don't get resolved, I find that I end up helping them at 63. And so the continuum goes on. And so what I want to present today on either self and soul care or soul and self-care, you can either go either way, is something that I've worked with therapists in the past and also some of the adults that come in my office, is that if we don't take care of ourselves, then how are we going to do all the things that we need to do in our lives? And so the journey begins. And I call it a journey because I realized a few years ago that it's not, oh, we figure out life and we get there, and when we get there, we're done, or we figure out where we are and we're done. Um, my daughter is 17 and my son is 12, almost 13. And as they were growing, I realized, oh, okay, good. I got this. I figured them out and then something happened and they went through another developmental stage. And then I'm like, okay, I'm starting over again. Oh, wait, I got this. We, we got this. We're good. And then something else happens. And I realized, okay, this isn't something that I'm just going to get and accomplish. This is something that is an ongoing process. And so I call it a journey. About five or six years ago, I felt like, um, I need to find balance. And I didn't know what that meant, but I just felt unbalanced and I need to figure out what it was. And I did feel that once I found the balance, then everything would be okay. Um, about 2003, 
I did what's called the wheel, and it's in your packet, and we're gonna get to it. And I didn't remember doing that in 2003. And so later on, when I started to look at resources to help other adults, as well as the therapists that I work with, I found the wheel again and did it myself and realized that there were some things that I needed to work on. And so that's why we're gonna call it a journey. And I'm gonna call all of you learning leaders because as long as we're alive, we're gonna keep growing and we're gonna keep learning. And so this segment of today is going to be about how you can become the leader of your life, wherever you are in your life. And this is what we are used to seeing, right? Live life healthy. And what really does that mean? So I'm gonna ask a few questions. You could raise your hands if you agree. How many of you feel like you have figured it out and you have balance in your life? I was really hoping for a few, because then I was going to say, when we break out in our small groups, you find that person. But I realized that maybe there aren't. OK. How about how many of you, show of hands, figured out a great self-care regimen? OK. So keep your hands up. You guys find those people when you want to be in your group so you can find new ideas. OK. Third question. How many of you have thought about a philosophy of, OK, once I get this, then I'm good? Or once I get here, then I'll be good? Nobody? That's a good thing. And I would say, because that's the first part of live, we always want and have a goal maybe in life, and we want to get to that point, and we say once we get to that goal, we might be good. But a lot of times when I find that the people that I work with, mainly adults, that feel that once I get there, then I'm good, they're missing out on the journey in between. And how many of you paid attention to everything that you saw on the way here this morning? Or were you more focused on just getting here? So you missed everything in between? So when you miss everything in between, what happens is you're missing pieces of life. And so sometimes when you can say, I don't even know how I got here. I was in a daze. That's a little scary. Um, we should be able to focus. So sometimes, if we're thinking about what's the next thing we're going to do when we get home, what's the next thing we're going to do when we get to work, what are we going to do? How about taking a step back and say, oh, you know, I noticed that I got every green light on the way here. Or maybe I got every red light and I'm mad because it's making me late. But taking time to notice that, I'm sure a lot of you get stuck behind a slow car. Yeah. I heard that one, yes. So I learned to say, OK, God wants me to be behind this car for a reason. I, I don't know what that is. Sometimes it's a license plate, and I'm looking at the license plate. Is it a license plate that I'm supposed to read? Am I supposed to notice the pretty trees? But instead of being mad that I'm stuck, how about I just stay where I am, because this is exactly where I am supposed to be right now, and I'm going to live in this moment. So the first thing it says is how stress affects you. And so I'm sure that at this point in our lives, I can't say this for the kids that I work with, but many of the adults realize if I'm overwhelmed, I get headaches, or I get stomach aches, or my back hurts. My back only hurts Monday through Friday. My back doesn't hurt on the weekend. Hmm, I wonder why. Um, and then my back starts hurting maybe Sunday at 8 o'clock. Um, because I'm worried about the next day. And so all of those things are symptoms that are telling you something. How many people say, oh, I forgot to eat today? Yeah, I don't understand that. Um, I live to eat. I look at my schedule like, when am I going to be able to eat? Like, oh, wait, I have eight back-to-back -back clients. When am I going to be able to eat? And when people tell me I forgot to eat today, that tells me, besides the fact of I don't know how you're living and surviving, but your you're missing your body signals. You're missing the little rumbles in your stomach. You're missing the fact that around 2 o'clock you might be foggy, and you're not thinking as clearly as you might have this morning. And so that's not living um, your life healthy. That's really focusing on what I have to do today. So on the other side, you'll see that jar. It's kind of unclear and jumbled and not very nice. And it looks like the jar of life, and you just threw all the aspects of your life in there. This is how I think a lot of us live. And so the activity that we'll do later will hopefully be more clear, and you would have better pieces to look at instead of just stones in a jar. Taking good care of yourself is important. 
I've been through a lot over the last few years, and if it wasn't for my support, I don't know how I would have made it. And so I had to learn how to ask for help. I had to learn that I can't do all of this on my own. And so the second bullet talks about who you can reach out to and who can be there for you while you're trying to go through that process of paying attention to what's important in your body so you can do what's important in your life. And then the last one is making self-care a priority. I have a friend of mine who always goes to bed, she says 12, 12.30 at night. And I don't know how she does it because she has to get up at six. I've learned that I don't function very well. Everyone in my household is not a morning person. If you come spend the night and you're with me and my kids and you up in the morning, you might think we're rude. It's not that, we're just not morning people, but it's even worse if we go to bed late. And so I've learned that I have to get in the bed at a certain time and I have to cut everything off at another time. And so if I can get my friend to do the same thing and not go to bed at 12 and wake up at six, then maybe when I do talk to her in the middle of the day, she won't be so grumpy and complaining all the time about how tired she is. And so we have to make it a priority to do whatever it is. And we're gonna set some goals today on what will be a priority for you. Oops. Okay, so how do I view my life? How many of you like baseball? Okay, even though you don't like baseball, how many of you understand baseball? More hands, okay, good. Um, I grew up in New York, so I've been to quite a few Mets games when Mets Stadium was there, um, and a few Yankee games, because that's what we would do for field trips and stuff like that in camps. And I didn't really like it because it was really hot, um, and it was very long, but I recently found out that I had a great analogy for baseball by accident. I was going through what we call life every day, and I was talking to a friend and explaining how I viewed life. And I said, it's like I'm at bat, and the pitcher keeps throwing the ball, but I keep hitting the ball, and I hit it out the park. And the pitcher keeps pitching the ball, and I keep hitting it out the park. But the pitcher keeps pitching the ball, and I keep hitting it out the park. And I'm tired, and I'm tired of hitting this ball and knocking it out the park. And my friend told me, well, Nicole, you are actually hitting the ball and you're hitting it out the park. Now, what a lot of people who know me really well is if I say I'm going to do something, I do it to the point where I won't even say it until the last minute and already do it because I don't like false promises or I don't like giving false hope. So if I'm gonna hit that ball, I'm gonna hit it out the park. But what they were trying to tell me was, what about the people that stand there and let the ball hit them? Or what about the people that stand there and then move out the way real quick and the ball passes them by? Or in baseball, if you bunt the ball just a little bit and run, sometimes you don't make it to first base because you only bunted it and that catcher, pitcher is gonna catch it and you're out. And so when I was told to really look at baseball and look at the different things that can happen, not everybody is going to hit that ball. So I had to start changing the way I saw the things that I was going through. And the fact that I was capable of hitting the ball and that I was tired maybe I needed to look at the fact that I'm able to hit the ball and I need resources. And maybe not everybody is going to be able to hit that ball. So with that, I wonder how you view your life. And if you can take a minute to figure out, and maybe you already know it, you can write it down or you can just keep it to yourself. Are you the person that's hitting the ball repeatedly and you're tired and you need somebody to help you strengthen your supports? Are you the person that misses the ball? Are you the person that avoids the ball completely? Or are you in the way and the ball is hitting you and hurting you every single time? Uh, let's see. There's another one that I thought as I was putting this together. Are you the person that says time out just for a second? and then maybe you have a minute to just see what you need to do and gather yourself. This ball is life, right? We can't stop the pitcher, he's gonna keep going, and it's how we have to manage what happens with that. We cannot control what life throws at us, but 80% of what happens in life is really more of our reaction 
and the 20% is the situation, but a lot of times we blow this situation up to be the 80%. And so if you're one of those people that feel that the ball is, keeps hitting you, how about changing your view to maybe I just need to move out the way right now, or maybe I just need to say time out and get the help that I need. But how you view your life is the beginning of where we are with this part of today. What do I need to do to take better care of myself? And that's just called self-awareness. How aware are you about your situation and how it affects your body? But then again, how does it affect your family? And then again, how does it affect your work? And sometimes how does it affect your mental health? Does everybody have an idea? of how you view your life? Okay. How many of you like the way you view your life right now? Okay. So, wait, raise your hands again. So, when you get in your groups, you gotta find those people. Okay, because they're on a different part of the journey. Um, I work with some kids that are, that are on the spectrum, and now they call it on the spectrum, but they have autism. And it is a spectrum, and I'll just say it can be from here to here, because every child that comes in my office on the spectrum, they're so different that I can't compare, I can't use the same tools that I use with them. But we're on the spectrum in here, and if I were to, which I won't, um, but if I was at one of my VCU classes, and we only have like 25 people and I would do this, I might line you up to see where you are on that spectrum, and then maybe the people that are further along on that journey could hook themselves up with somebody that's back here and we could help each other and learn from each other. And so hopefully today when you are paired in those separate three to four people in your group, you can learn from each other and you can get ideas that can help you move forward. So this quote came to me at a really important time. In the end, she became more than she expected she became the journey, and like all journeys, she did not just end, she simply changed directions and kept going. And that stuck with me for a very long time, because, and I think I'm still there, to realize that we're not just going to stop, but we need to change directions. And I think there's a segment about how to handle tough decisions, and this is all part of that. What do I do? Um, another section of self-care, is the boundaries. You know, how, how good am I with boundaries? One of my people that I work with in her 50s is still learning how to manage her boundaries because I think that if she were to think about the, bas the basketball, the baseball analogy, she would say she keeps getting hit by the ball. But her situation of getting hit by the ball is where is she with her boundaries with everybody? And so she could stop getting hit. Then you have some people that might avoid it. So. We're on this journey, we're all learning leaders, we're on this journey together. And this is how the journey begins. This is a wheel. Now, I can't take credit for this. Like I said, I did this in 2003. And I've seen this online, you can look it up. They call it the wheel of life, they call it the balance wheel. It's out there, everyone's done it. So again, I can't take credit for it, but I really like to use this. You can see that there's eight pieces. Um, when I use this, sometimes I call it a pie, but for what we're gonna call it today, it makes more sense to be a wheel. But the eight pieces are going to be eight parts of your life. So what I decided to do, instead of just giving you eight, was to give you some options. And so you can see that there's psychological and mental health, and I'm not necessarily focused on the fact of actual mental health, meaning you're diagnosed with depression or anxiety or any other disorder and you're having to take medication for that. More mental health of how stressed am I? How is my stress impacting me? Is it causing me to have high blood pressure um, or other issues with my health? Sometimes migraines aren't just neurological, sometimes they are brought on by stress. Um, and other ailments that we might have. Um, if we skip down a little bit to health and wellness, well, those can go hand in hand. So the psychological mental health can affect the health. 
but you could decide which one is more important. If your health and wellness is more important, then you might not have psychological and mental health on your wheel. Physical space and home environment. This one I really, really, really like. This will always be on my wheel. When you come home from work, from a long day, how comfortable and welcoming and warming is your home environment? Do you come in and say, oh gosh, I have so much to do. The dishes are still in the sink, I didn't clean up, I have to put the laundry away. Or when you come home, does it welcome you and you feel good in your environment? And that's something to think about because there's enough studies out there to say that when we don't have a good organized space or we don't have nice smells or comfortable um, pillows or whatever it is you want to call it, we don't feel fully relaxed. So if your home environment is something that you want to work on, you would have that on your wheel. I would extend that a little bit also to your work environment. If you come in and your papers are everywhere and you can't find any, everything, then you might not be productive. Um, we are very sensory oriented, right? Right now this light is really bright in my eyes. It's not affecting me, but for some people it might affect. And so how's the lighting in your office? Or how's the lighting at your house? Are there candles or does it always smell like food? I don't like when my house smells like food because remember I think about when I'm gonna eat all the time and so I don't wanna think about when I'm gonna eat all the time so I try my best to burn a candle and then I make sure that that candle is something that will make me feel better. Or lavender at night. I've started to create an environment with a lavender. I don't even really like lavender but it does remind me of a spa-like setting and it does relax me. So think about your home setting and what it does for you and if it's something that you need to change. Professional and career. So some people might be in transition trying to figure out what they want to do in their career. They might not be comfortable or they might be perfectly happy. And so you will want to assess where you are with that. Spirituality. And I put spirituality because it, it can be big. It can be big as your God and church, or it could be you know, yoga and meditation, whatever you want spirituality to be. Health and wellness, we talked a little bit about the health part, but the wellness could also be anything that you're doing, whether you're walking, whether you're doing exercises, joining a gym, playing a sport. All of those things can help with self-care and making sure that you are taking care of yourself. Going to fun and recreation. How many people say that they incorporate fun in their lives? Good, lots of hands. Is it easy to add the fun into your life? Good, for some people it's not. And so if it's already easy and you feel really good about that, you might not need to put that on your wheel. Looking down at personal growth, sometimes some people feel that the personal growth goes with the um, professional career or it can go with spirituality. So depending on how you view it, you might put that on there if there's some things you want to work on, or if it can go under your spiritual, then you might not put that on there. And then you have relationship and romance. And I put a slash there because it depends on where you are in that journey with your relationships. Sometimes I work with people just on relationships in general, whether it's with their parents, grandparents, their kids, or their significant other. So it's a slash depending on where you are with that. The next three, you see family, friends, and then you see family, and then you see friends. And so if they need to be separate, you would make them separate. If you can lump them all together, you do so. And then the last one, the big one, is finances. And I feel that, but I'm not going to say it has to be. That should be on everybody's wheel because it corresponds with sometimes health and wellness and your career and possibly your spiritual growth. So. These are the aspects of it. I'm going to show you a life coaching session with a learning leader. And so with this, just because we had time to work together, I had cut out all of these 12 different aspects of the wheel, and then I had the person choose eight of them. And so in each one, you're going to figure out which one you want. And what she did was, she glued them down to show what she wanted to work on. So the first one that she decided to pick was a psychological and mental health. 
Then the next one she picked was spirituality. And for this particular one, her spirituality was her church and making sure that she was connected to God and having more faith. The third one she picked was health and wellness. The fourth one was family, and she decided to separate family with friends and just have the family aspect. The next one was personal growth. Now, when you're doing this today, you're not going to cut and glue. We're going to go ahead and write what we want to write on our wheel. But again, this was a life coaching session. Her next one was finances. And then the last two were fun and recreation. And then she added friends to that. So again, you could be creative with which and how you choose to have your wheel. And then professional career. So I didn't show it on here, but we went back and she added fun and recreation to her fun piece. I mean, to her friend piece. The next step is you're going to assign a number. So on your wheel, there is a line from the beginning center of the wheel all the way to the end, that spectrum of zero to 10. You're going to figure out where you are in each piece. So as you can see, for finances, she put a four. For spirituality and for health and wellness, she has a five and a four. For personal growth, she has a Five, I think she turned them around. And she found the number on that number line, and she sh now is shading up into that number. So if she decided to have a 10, then her whole entire piece of the wheel would have been completely covered. If she decided it was a zero, then nothing would be in that wheel. So as she's coloring, you can notice something about the wheel. Is it perfectly even? There's different pieces at different levels, correct? Okay. Now, how many of you have adult coloring books at home? There's a few, okay. And so the reason why I also like doing this in a session is because you get to color a little bit. Um, when we read, we read from left to right, right? When we're sleeping, our eyes go back and forth, right? And so when you're coloring or when you're knitting or you're doing anything like that, it's the same motion of going back and forth. And that's why your brain is relaxed. And so when I have kids are coloring all over the place, I try to get them to calm down and color in one direction and they can feel the difference. And so as she's finishing up her wheel, I would then ask, how do you feel about this? So we talked a little bit about self-awareness. How aware were, uh, were you before you did this? Did you realize that there were eight aspects of your life that you wanted to focus on? And are they where you want them to be right now? If she were to roll her wheel down the street, why, why are you laughing? What'd you say? She's not gonna do much, too much rolling, so she might be stuck. Yeah, so say if this were four wheels on the car. Pretty, pretty rough, right? Pretty bumpy. And depending on where you, your wheel is, sometimes it might not roll. You might not be able to get it over and then you feel stuck. So before this happens, if you're not already working on things, it makes you more aware of why you might already feel stuck and what you need to learn so you can better lead yourself in your life. So we need to figure out what's on your wheel. You should have a handout. And in your handout, there will be a wheel. And at the very top of your handout, there's a word bank of all 12 of the aspects of your life. 
you only need to pick eight. I want you to take a few minutes and go ahead and pick the eight and write them on top of each piece. If you don't want to write them. Oh, if you don't want to write on it. Is, LaDon, is there a way that they can get another wheel if they wanted to? Yes. Okay, write on it and we will make sure you have a clean wheel. But to be honest with you, you want to write on it because this is sort of like a plan. You know, we set goals. This is sort of like a goal and you can look at it, you know, three months from now and see where you are. So if you want a clean wheel, we'll make sure you have a clean wheel. For those of you who are a little bit faster than others, if you've already figured out what your eight pieces are, go ahead and assign the number and begin shading. LaDon, she wants a pen. You want a pen? Oh, you don't have a wheel. Okay, I see some people are still working and some people might be done. For those of you who are done, were you already aware of this is where your wheel is or this is where your life is? Or are some people surprised? Let me ask it differently. Raise your hand if you say that this is something you were already aware of. Okay. Raise your hand if you're surprised. Okay. So a few hands. So once you have this wheel, we can look at this as something that you have, and you guys are not in my clients, you're not in my sessions, but I look at it as a treatment plan of how am I going to get from this part of my journey further down my journey. But now I have a starting point. Now I know what's important to me. How many people by a show of hands, if they had four of these wheels on their car, would make it very far? Oh, we have, we have one, two, okay, a few more hands. So that means you are in a good place and maybe don't have as many things to work on. How many people have at least three things that they would wanna work on? Okay, so that's where we're going to start. Do you know why I only picked three? Yes, because you don't wanna be overwhelmed. So if you have five areas that you want to work on, that's just too, too many. You want to start with the three. But it's a matter of if you do have five areas that you want to work on, which ones are, are easily attained? So I already asked the question, if you would roll your wheel, how well would it roll? So there should be another sheet of paper in there that has the word soul written down the side with blank spaces in between. I tried to fit as much as I can on that page, so definitely, if you can't fit it all on there, you'll get the idea as we go along on what to do when you get home. So we're talking about self-awareness, soul, and self-care, or self and soul care, whichever way you want it to be. And so what I decided to do is break down what soul is. So the S, you're searching. The O is the objective, what your objective is. The U is underlining factors. And then the last part, the L is two L's, learn and live. Instead of live and learn, is learn and live. So with your three pieces that you want to work on, those three are important because you're searching for what's important to you. And those three are the ones that you feel that needs to be worked on so you can take better care of yourself. The question is, why is it important? So for my learning leader, she picked psychological slash mental health, spiritual and personal growth. So you're gonna put those as what you're searching for. So the S would be whichever three you picked. So if you picked finances, then the first S would be finances. If you picked friends, then the second block, your S would be friends. 
And then if you picked whatever your third one, that would be in your third block under the S for searching. Does everybody have that sheet? No, some people yes, some people no. So, okay. So if you wanna use the back of your wheel while you're waiting, you're gonna write your three sections down. But as you can see, she didn't have a sheet either. So you're right where she was. So if you don't have a sheet, you can use the back of your wheel and you can do exactly what she did. The S is the three things that you're searching to change and because it's important. So underneath that, she went to the U. Well, actually, she put why it's important first. So she said, without my sanity, I cannot do anything else. That's why psychological and mental health was important to her. For spirituality, she said it was important because without God, there is nothing. And for the last one, for personal growth, it was important to her because it will allow her to progress in all the areas of her life. So if you wanna write a statement underneath that of why it's important, so that way you know why you're working on it, you can do that as well. Under S, we're still under S. Right there, there you go. Does everyone have one now? One more? So we have what we're searching for, we have why it's important. So looking at the objective, look at this more of a, as a goal. What is the purpose and how does it serve in your life? So it's what purpose does it have and what purpose does that piece serve in your life? So, yes. It's what's important now and then it's why you want it to be better. So if you had a four and she had, and I'll show you right here, oops, yeah. So she had a four for mental health and um, physical, psychological. She said to be able to mentally handle what life throws at her or throws her way. So she wants it to be where she is now so she can prove that four to be an eight. So you want to understand your goal, your objective. And you can even put there that you want your number to go from one number to another. And how is it going to get there? So she has for spirituality to give everything to Jesus and to fully trust. That's where she wants to be and that's her journey for that one. And then for her personal growth to be true to herself no matter what the situation is. So those are her goals. So your goals are, or your objective is, how am I going to improve this? The next one are the underlining factors. We always have something in our way, right? And sometimes those factors prevent us to getting to where we need to be. But those underlining factors can also be, what do I have? What supports do I have that can help me get to where I need to be? So you wanna know what both of those are. So if you picked finances, well, what's in my way is that my job doesn't pay well, but the support is that I might get help from my part-time job. But the goal might be above that, I might need to get a better job. But you need to know what's in the way. So the underlying factors are, are what's stopping me from getting from a four to a 10? And what supports do I have or what changes do I need to make for that? So this piece here is the self-awareness you have to know what's hindering you. So this is the block where she said that her work environment and her family dynamic is hindering her mental health. Not taking enough time for herself, but she also put that her fear is in the way. And then she has for the last one for personal growth, not valuing herself is in the way, but she also put her limitations as not a negative thing. 
She looked at her limitations as a way to keep her going and her focus. These are the things that are limiting me. How can I learn from them to make myself better? So what's stopping me and what can help me? Going back to the top, when she has psychological and mental health, she said her strong support system is what supports her and helps her in that section. So you should have S, O, and L. I'm sorry, S, O, and U. And then we're gonna go to the learn part. We have to learn from our past. We have to know what our history is and what our mistakes are. A lot of times when I'm working with people, I always ask, what is the history showing you? What is the pattern that is presented? What is your pattern? And once you know what the history is, then you can learn. Then you can also live. So we're learning that this is our past. I don't really like this. So now that I'm self-aware, how am I going to move forward and live out what my purpose is so each piece that I just chose can be better? So on your wheel, or you can put it under the L on your soul paper, you can write something that will help you. So for my learning leader, she said for her physical, psychological and mental health, take her medicine. You know, vitamins, supplements, the things that help us keep going. If I don't take my vitamins, I have a hard time staying awake and focusing. And so I need to take my medicine. She put for spirituality that she was going to read the Bible daily. And then she put for health and wellness, take time for herself daily and set a bedtime and stick to it. So for your L, it's what can I do now? I know that when I stay up late or I know when I don't take my vitamins and I don't you know, eat the correct way, I don't function very well. So what do you know about yourself and now how well are you gonna live in it? So you're gonna set an objective to do and maybe you'll do this for the next 30 days. It takes 30 days to create a habit or to break a habit. So if she reads her Bible 30 days She's gonna get in the habit of it and probably won't break it and hopefully that will raise her spirituality. If she takes her medicine, if I take my vitamins on a consistent basis, it becomes a routine and then I'm better able to function. If she takes time for herself daily, then she can maybe be able to um, have better health and wellness. So you have a little bit of a plan, right? You see where your wheel is. Many of you aren't happy with your wheel you have a plan, you set something that you can move forward with, and hopefully in 30 days, there'll be some changes and you can reevaluate and say, did I go up at least one or two numbers or am I still where I am? And if so, then I might need to look at things differently. So how can we look at supporting ourselves? We need to go to the self-care part. So self-care is many aspects. It's taking care of all of the pieces, your physical condition, your accepting yourselves, how do you have fun, how do you pay attention to things, the choices that you make. Boundaries isn't up there, but I think boundaries should be up there. Um, how kind you are to yourself. It's not necessarily how kind you are to others, but how kind you treat yourself. Um, I had to come up with my own motto that I am not going to overextend myself because of the need that I have to help. So LaDon mentioned that I had a four month waiting list. And so the problem is I can't answer my phone. So I literally have learned not to answer my phone because when you call me and tell me what the problem is, I'm like, oh wait, I can do this, I can do this. And then I look at my calendar and my schedule has no room and I will skip lunch because this person needs help and I realize that I'm overextending myself and then wonder why I crash at the end of the day. So we have a new thing, it's not new, I just didn't stick to it, my boundaries. I have a person that answers the phone and then they take the call, they put them on a wait list, 
But then sometimes she comes to me and she says, Nicole, I really think you need to take this person. And I look at her like, you're the one who's supposed to stop me from taking these people. Um, I'll tell you when I have an opening, but I really think this person's good for you. And I've learned to say, I can't. To the point now, I let my voicemail pick up everything, I listen to it, and then there's a great feature on it where I can forward it through a text to my person who answers the phone, and I never have to talk to that person. Because when I do, I overextend. So my motto for self-care was, I am not going to overextend myself just because I have that desire to help. And it took a while to get there, but I'm a lot better for it now. So you have to think about what your worth is and maybe what your mantra is, your motto, your saying, your quote, and you have to stick to it. And once you stick to it, then you have more room for that self-care. So I don't think you could probably see this up here, but there's 50 ways of taking a break. And so sometimes people say, I need a vacation. But if you can't plan that vacation for two, three months from now, remember how once I get there, then I'll be okay? And once I get to that vacation, I'll be okay. I'm guilty of that too, because I really can't wait to go somewhere. It's a warm out, and I'm finally able to go and have some sun and fun. But then I have to realize, what am I doing in the meantime? And so the taking the break can be five, 10 minutes. I enjoy my chai tea. It's a special time for me. And if I also know I'm going to have a stressful climate, cl climate, client, well, climate, um, I drink that chai because it's not only a break for me, but it's going to help me get through a rough session. So these are 50 things to take a break. You can sit in silence. Music is important if you're in touch with music. Music speaks to me. Um, taking a bath. Taking a shower. I have kids that say they cry in the shower. It's their alone time because their tears are washed down the drain and they feel better. Um, music for a lot of our teens are, is really important. I try to help them to understand with that self-awareness, what songs are you listening to though? Because that can make it worse depending on your mood. You know, when you're a teenager and you have a breakup, you listen to all the sad songs. That's probably not a good idea, not good self-care. So how about you change the music? So that self-awareness goes in every aspect. Um, there's other things on here like talking with friends, taking a walk. Those of you who have that coloring book, those are some things that you can work on for yourself too. So with some of the things I brought up and with some of the people that you are about to be in your small groups with, these are your questions and you should have them also in the packet. Say it again. On the back of the wheel. And first, you're going to discuss the three pieces of your wheel, if you feel like sharing, but you're really going to discuss what you want to improve. You don't have to necessarily share why, but what you want to improve, and then suggestions that you could either share with each other to help each other to improve those. And the second one is, our, as you're beginning the self-awareness and soul process, what is that quote, that mantra, that theme song, that Bible verse that will help keep you motivated. So mine was, I cannot overextend myself just because I want to help. Well, that goes to my kids too. Um, I've learned that the way they say mom or mama or mommy, when I know my 17-year-old doesn't call me mommy, I kind of try to run the other way because I know you're about to ask me for something that I'm not ready to say anything about. So those boundaries are important there. And then the last one is to discuss at least three self-care techniques or practices that you currently do that can help you maintain and find that balance. And then you can share with each other on other ways that you can add some more self-care things or even supports to your life. You have 15 minutes, so that'd be about five minutes per discussion question. And so if you can now find three to four people to pair up with and to work through these questions. Okay, I know you guys are probably not done, but we need to move forward. There's one more thing that I forgot to say. Are you ready? When you get there, it's still a journey, right? So when you get there, let's say we're at the three and six months and your numbers are looking good, that's great. 
the goal is not necessarily to get to 10 because you might not get to 10 and it's okay. But if you do get to 10, what's gonna happen in the baseball field? Right, we're gonna have something pitched back at us, right? And so now we're trying to balance the wheel. So if you get to all eight, so you get to seven and eights, it might be a little bit bumpy, but life is a roller coaster, not a merry-go-round. And so if we're on the roller coaster, it can be a little fun, a little scary, but the balance is we need to figure out how to balance our wheel. And that's where the self-care comes in. I'm having a hard time right now in this area. What do I need to be doing differently so I can move it up? So if you get to all 10, it's great, but you can't stop there because it keeps going and it's a journey. So we're at the point that you're self-aware, the things are in your face, you're having to face them right now and do something about it, and then once you get going and your wheel is where you want it to be, then we need to maintain and balance. And that's being aware, checking on your wheel periodically, knowing what it is so you don't even have to look at your wheel and just know I'm a little bit off balance, what do I need to work on, and then maintaining that self-care. Okay? All right, thank you. Why don't we give God praise for Nicole? Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord.